Um, welcome to Memory Comics. I want to say thank you to The Believer for putting this together and reaching out and having me do this. I appreciate it. It's something I'm passionate about and it's something I focus on in my work a lot because I do a lot of memoir and autobio. Uh, my name is Lawrence Lindell. I'm from California and I make memoir comics and autobio stuff about mental health, queerness, blackness. Uh, my pronouns are he, they or you can just use my name and I'm completely fine with that. And so let's get started. Um, I have a comic out right now called From Truth With Truth. And it's a memoir comic about growing up in a Baptist church, mental health and being a child of divorce. And I use a lot of emotional memory or what I call emotional memory to kind of draw back and recall those interactions and occurrences. So, hold on. The screen is stuck. What happened? All right. Sorry about that, um, my, my computer was stuck. So I use a lot of emotional memory to talk about um, how I was feeling, why I was feeling that, and what it can look like on the screen. I think a lot of times with comics, we're too focused on the details of, I was wearing a red shirt, it was May and it was 7 p.m. Whereas I'm more focused on, I felt terrible and here's how terrible can be represented in comics. So I'm gonna try to share my screen again. Um, and I'll just leave it on the not full play. Okay, so I made a comic book called Couldn't Afford Therapy, so I made this and a comic book called Both. And it's about being queer, black, and um, kind of coming out, but then being too scared to come out. So emotional memory, the ability to consciously remember aspects of experiences invoked by an emotional reaction and how do I use emotional memory in comics? That's a good question. I ask myself questions. So the first thing I always ask is how did I feel? Second is why do I think I felt that way? And then the third is what can that look like? And number three is the most important to me. Um, I find that thinking about what it can look like and not what it actually looked like um, gives you more fun and also makes it easier to process certain emotions that you might feel. It also makes it easier to convey emotions to people who might not understand what you're saying spoken in spoken word. So here's an example of feeling distant from an awkward conversation with my dad. And I use, I use the panels literally to, as I go down, they spread apart. And so it's a nice way to convey the emotion of feeling distant from my dad, um, literally in the comic panel, even though we're in the same space and there's no actual physical distance that happened in real life. Another example is fear and turning my emotions into monsters. So waking up knowing that I have bipolar, PTSD, anxiety, and I'm an introvert and feeling like I don't know how to start the day. So I use monsters as a way to convey that emotion and feeling voiceless or helpless, literally removing my mouth um, I promise I'm not a sad person. It's just I deal with like real life things like everyone else does. And I tend to make comics about that. <laughs> but I'm pretty happy. And this one is feeling stuck, but having my thoughts be so loud that they literally surround me. And saying that doesn't always, it's not easy to convey to people, but seeing it on the screen to me makes a lot of sense of this feeling. And I know a lot of people that have said they felt this way too and that's how it, it looks to them. So for you, I want you to choose two memories and answer these questions. How did you feel? Why do you think you felt that way? And what can that look like? And for me, I chose the day I fell down a waterfall. It's not as dramatic as it sounds, but I was embarrassed, uh, ashamed, and discomfort. Uh, why do I think I felt that way? Everyone was looking at me, I was all wet, and I was the only one who fell. The second memory is my art opening. 
I felt relieved, relaxed, and happy. And I felt that way because the installation was complete. It was over and it was a celebration. So I want you to choose two memories and answer these questions. How did you feel? And why do you think you felt that way? And we're gonna spend about five minutes doing that before we go to the next one. And if I'm not making sense or you have questions, I think you have the option to raise your hand and someone can help you out with that and they'll unmute you so I can answer your questions. And feel free to be generous with uh, your feelings. So if you felt multiple feelings, put them all because the more you have to work with, the more you have to put on the page when you make the comic. Uh, I only chose one just to keep it like minimal for the example. But if you felt the range of emotions, put the range of emotions and why you think you felt that way. And we're going to have about three more minutes, so I'll, I'll keep counting down just to give you a heads up before I, I move on. And if you have multiple memories and you want to do more than two, please feel free. Um, I just kept it to two because I didn't want to confuse you. As you see, I'm like rambling. Again, I'm nervous. Uh, I do make comics. doesn't make me any less nervous. And yeah, move at the pace you need to. So if you have a range of feelings, put them all. If you only want to do one, just do one. And don't feel obligated to pick something that you don't want to share or that you don't want to feel right now. There's no obligations. give it a f maybe one one more minute And if we could start wrapping it up, um, you'll be able to revisit this later. So after you've answered, how did you feel? And why do you think you felt that way? We're gonna do the third question is what can that look like? And for me, uh, I like to do a combination of a list, little diagrams, little sketches, um, scribbles, the idea for this is not that it's meant to share, but that it's meant for you to kind of get all of your memories and thoughts from your head to the page. 
So write down as much information as you can and that you want to, and then what that can lead to to look for your final comic page. And for me, uh, falling down the waterfall, this is a trope I do a lot of my comics with, like kind of floating heads, laughing at me when I'm embarrassed. Uh, it's one I like a lot, so I tend to use it quite a bit. And then the one about releasing myself, um, kind of like if I was a faucet and all the stress and pressure and what if no one shows up, what if they hate it, kind of just comes out. Or the other one where I'm standing on a literal cloud and he says, my name is Nine and congratulations on the show. So you can be as literal or just as fun as you want with it. Um, the most important thing is that there's no right way to make a comic especially not a memory comic or a memoir because it's so personal. You can do it however you feel you need to do it. And yeah, that's what I want you to do for these pages. Lawrence, we have one question. I'm going to unmute them so they can ask. Okay. Hey, is that me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hey. Um, you kind of answered this already, but I'm going to still ask it. Um, how do you not fall back on you know, worn out or trite imagery. So for example, one of my emotions was feeling humbled mm -hmm. and proud at the same time. And then I thought, oh, I'm gonna, you know, draw myself with my hands clasped, you know, and that just felt kind of expected. Um, and you kind of answered it saying there's no right way to draw a comic, but if you have any other thoughts on that, I'd appreciate it. Well, I would think, why do you think um, drawing your hands like that represents that and are there other perspectives to think about what humble could be like and proud. Also, if you draw that a lot, you can also do kind of what I like to do, where is you make fun of that, where it's like, oh, I'm doing this type of drawing again. You still get to put the humble in there, but you kind of call yourself out as a reminder of like, maybe I want to change it up. Um, it is about having as much information as possible. So what about that emotion makes you think, draw my hands like that? And we're gonna give it a few more minutes. Also, it's okay to draw something you're familiar with drawing because it's about getting the idea on the page and then you can change it later or you could revisit it later if you don't wanna keep drawing that same image. But if that gets like, for me, it gets me rolling to know, okay, this represents that. All right, how can I push this further? Or how can I not push it and kind of bring it back? How can I minimize it or do I need to expand upon it and exaggerate it? So always give yourself room to play with your own work. Um, making comics takes time and there's no perfect comic ever. There's no perfect art ever. So it just takes time to kind of get in your groove of how you make comics. And so keeping all these things you're writing down in mind, we're eventually gonna choose one memory and using the information you got from answering the questions to make a single page comic. And I know I keep saying it, but there is no right way. Um, I went to art school for undergrad. I'm in an MFA program right now. And there's a thing about art school where it's like, especially I went for illustration animation where it's, you better know how to draw, you better do it like this. Um, and the best thing I learned is that none of that actually matters. Once you find your voice, you can learn any tool and skill you want to, but find your own voice first and then use those tools to enhance your voice, not the other way around. So you could be the best technical drawer and that doesn't mean you're gonna get that dream job or that doesn't mean your comics the best. 
if you could find your voice, it gives you that unique perspective, which is the type of comics I like to read anyways. So, so there is no right way. I'll, I'll keep saying that until I'm gone because I know a lot of people don't actually believe it and they really feel like there's a way to draw comics when that's not true. And so as you're finishing up gathering your information, let's draw. <laughs> so I'm gonna draw with you. Um, I'm gonna see if I could do this thing. I'm not that great at technology, but I tried this thing earlier and it worked where you could see me as I'm drawing. Um, it's actually not that complex. It's just moving the camera, but I like to make it sound more dramatic than it is because it's exciting. So let's see. We're going to draw our comics for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the thing is, like, you could use traditional paneling if you want, if that makes you feel comfortable. The idea is just to get something on the page that you could later build upon. It's not to have this perfect comic by the end of this workshop. I'm not special. I'm not nobody you need to impress. It's just this is for you. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever you want to put on the page, put on the page. If that's a stick figure and some words, that is perfectly acceptable. If you want to go all out and try to throw in some shading and ink it, you can do that too. But the point is to get your emotions on the page. So I'm going to choose um, this one because it's happier and all the examples I showed were pretty sad. And I don't want you to think I'm a sad person. So. I think that's better. Also, let's say draftsman or drafting is not your your thing. Say if you wanted to do an abstract comic, which I'm a huge huge fan of, or kind of experimental, uh, tap into that. Sometimes emotions are colors. What if the whole page was just blue and you had writing on top of that page? Um, what if the whole panel was blue? Like, there's so many ways to play with comics um, and explore. And I feel like everyone feels like they have to have some type of grid or traditional paneling. It's just so many people have proven time and time again that there's so many ways to tell your story through the form of comics. And so I just want you to explore your emotions on the page.
So we're gonna give it maybe three to four more minutes. Um, and be free, like what I put on the page right now, it's not spectacular, it's not bad, it's just uh, an idea. And I can build upon that idea. And that's kind of the best way to make comics is keep building, um, keep gathering information, keep doing studies, keep exploring and experimenting. Uh, Cause you never know what you'll come up with tomorrow based off of what you did today. Or it might take a week for you to get that idea that you tried to put on the page today. It just takes time and kind of uh, permission. You need permission. Give yourself permission to explore. Not fail, but explore. Because how can you fail at telling your own story? It, it just It's not possible. So... In about a minute or so, I'm going to ask folks who want to share. Um, don't feel obligated to share. Uh, if it's too personal or you're not comfortable, you don't have to share. Um, but if you could tell you tell us your name, where you're coming from, and your pronouns, that would be fantastic. And also, I would like to know personally if you have an interest in drawing memoir or autobio comics, and if so, why? And... If not, maybe after today you do, but I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> So I'll share what I have. Um, feel free to keep drawing as we talk. Um, I'm a person who in school I would get in trouble because I was always doodling while others were talking, but that was my way of kind of coping with my anxiety because it gave me something to focus on. Like even when I have conversations, if I look down, that means I'm listening to you. I know it seems disrespectful, but when I'm looking you in the eye, I'm thinking about too many things. And so I try to put all my focus on you by looking down and just listening um so if you need to keep drawing keep drawing but if you would like to share now would be the time i came up with this i don't know if y'all could see it but it's me it's basically what i had in the sketch and i'm kind of relieving all of the words and then behind me is going to be the paintings that were in the show and they're going to talk to me and they're going to say you did it you did it you did it and then above like rays of sunshine um, I do this a lot because I don't like drawing panels, so I tend to do like <laughs> full splash pages and things like that. Also, I do a bit of painting and illustration, so I tend to lean on that a little bit more. Um, yeah, so if anyone wants to share, I believe you could raise your hand the old-fashioned way, or there's a button in Zoom, and folks can help you do that. Hey. 
I think you're muted. Hi. Hey. Everyone and Lawrence. Um, my name is Caitlin. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm calling in from Hong Kong. Uh, I kind of started making autobiozines just as a way to like get my feelings out. And actually one of the first ones I saw was by you, Lawrence. Um, and it just like really made me feel, whoa, like you can actually deal with a lot of personal feelings in your work. And it's so like, it's so validating to see someone go through some of the things you've gone through and having you talk about your queerness in your zine was really helpful for me. And the zine or panel that I've drawn out was about my first night moving to a new city in Taipei last year. And I was like really lonely and I had no one to hang out with and it was like my first Friday night there. So you, like you can kind of see the city behind me and I'm in like my really small bedroom I was renting. And I just felt like so lonely and like isolated. And I was just like waiting for like the one person I knew in that city to like text me back. So I was like, hi, like, are we still getting dinner? And like, it was just like texting back dots for like the whole rest of the night. So I went to bed that first night with like my suitcase under my bed. Like, I wonder if they're gonna text me back or like, I wonder if I'm gonna like make friends or fit into this like new city. And that's what I've kind of been like revisiting now. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. I love the arms um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm uh, Eileen Parks, and uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm from Brattleboro, Vermont, or I'm in Brattleboro, Vermont. I'm actually from California. Um, and this memory is from a long time ago, but it's very powerful. And uh, Lawrence, I loved your um, the, the brainstorming part, I would call. So I went ahead and just kept going with that because this memory is maybe from 1974. Um, I was raised in the Church of Christ at the time. And um, this is from, I, we went to North Charleston Church of Christ and um, they kept attendance, but we lived kind of far away and I didn't go very often. And one day we went when they were giving out attendance awards and I knew as they slowly kept doling out really cool trinkets from, um, you know, some kind of Bible store, uh, you know, little Bibles and bookmarks that I wouldn't be getting anything. And I was sitting in a chair and they eventually gave me a pack of spearmint chewing gum and uh, these big tears rolling down my face. And um, I know this sounds pathetic, but I find the memory kind of also hilarious. Um, so I just remember thick wooden chairs and the attendance chart and and all those, the, those kind of not mid, you know, century images of um, children's Bibles and things like that. So thanks a lot for helping me. It's always been a memory, but I've never worked it out like this. It's been, this is super. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you and I just, do, I like doing this kind of work. I like, I, I was lucky to take a class with Linda Berry and I, I, I do the Linda Berry type of work um, still. So this is, this is just great. Thank you. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Um, Hi, hi, Lawrence. Thanks so much for doing this. My name is uh, Neil. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I live in Miami, Florida. And um, this is so I I took a memory from um, since the the pandemic started, um, like two months ago. We uh, the some of the parks around here opened up. All the parks closed down, and everything. The shelter in place um happened and so um the park started reopening and uh my spouse and i went to a park in broward county um called fern forest and it was just so full of lots of great plants and and spiders and lizards um that we um uh it just felt really great to be around so much plant life again um because it's so rejuvenating so um i feel like we we felt very alive um, so I was just sort of drawing as many plants and creatures around the words and the drawings as much as I could. So thanks Thank for doing you. this. Hey. Hi, uh, my name is Tenley. I'm in Oakland, California or near Oakland. I'm in Emeryville. I'm wearing my Linda Berry t-shirt that I got at a workshop and my pronouns are uh, she, her, 
Um, and I drew a picture of the day I told my boss that I decided to retire earlier than planned. Um, this is me, scared to knock on my boss's door. These are dreads coming out. I don't know, this is just like the, the emotion. This is me being self-critical of how calling myself a quitter and saying that I was a bad person and because I had a very high stress and a pretty important job. And this is me feeling sad because I used to love that job and then now it was become a terrible, terrible thing. And then this is me feeling excited that I'm gonna fly away <laughs> like a butterfly. So it's very, you know, very raw, it's not done or anything, but, and this is my purse, which always ends up in all my cartoons. I love to draw myself. I used to feel kind of guilty about that, but now I just let that go. And my purse, usually shows up, this was my work bag. So it was always with me when I was working uh, like a security blanket. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Hey. Hi, um, I'm Nicole, uh, my pronouns are she and her and I am tuning in from Halifax in Canada um, on the East Coast here. And I really only started drawing in uh, during like the quarantine to try and like make sense of my emotions. So thank you for this and thank you to the Believer for this series because um, things like this have been really helpful to me. Um, I'm just gonna pick you up and turn my camera around um, to show you what I drew. So um, what I decided to to do was um, yesterday I woke up and I had no idea what time of day it was. It was like, um, it could have been 7 a.m. It could have been 9 p.m. <laughs> and it was so disorienting. So I drew myself with lots of question marks around me. Uh, I tried to draw myself on the couch with like a purple fog around me. I'm gonna try that. Um, this is my first time trying to draw a person on a couch. I'm gonna try that again um and then i'm just talking about how my sleep my sleep schedule is just getting more and more disconnected so i've got me just i feel like i'm wandering around in this fog sometimes i don't know what day it is so i've got i don't know how well you can see but i've got a calendar with a bunch of question marks <laughs> for the days uh because that's that's a very common feeling that i'm having right now uh, so thank you. Thank you. Hey. I think you're muted. Unmute. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm Jean, I'm from Las Vegas. I go by she, her. Um, I did, my dog had just um, died a week Go today and I've been really processing kind of a eulogy of sorts so today thank you Lawrence because I was able to instruct how I feel about my dog and just the moments I was feeling um, sad and just basing off the three questions you gave um, so yeah just the closeness I was able to do so thanks Lawrence thank you hey Hi, I'm Kara. Hi, Lawrence. I think I saw you at um, Blue Stockings event, maybe. So yes. it's great to great to be in this workshop. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to do memoir comics. Um, this is probably way more than one page, so I don't know if it really makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and I'm still like writing what the story is so it's not very detailed more like a thumbnail um but i i guess in the first panel up here um the memories about like meeting with a professor which is certainly tough territory to like even navigate writing about professors when you're in school um but yeah like the kind of awkwardness of a first meeting and what they're like online i guess versus in person. So I guess what I was trying to 
communicate there was like the online interaction and then we meet in the hall but um the second panel is like in the office and looking at the office and i was trying to avoid like or show and communicate like the lack of eye contact or like the intimacy with the awkwardness and of the eye contact so that's why you don't really see a lot of faces um so then like moving over here uh that's supposed to be like looking down at the chair before i sit on the chair i kind of really like um i don't know look kind of centering on an object that might help make the memory transition i don't know again kind of loaded and could be a lot more panels probably from here to here because the it, the text that you probably can't read that's not figured out yet is how like the chair signals memory of another chair mm -hmm. and like there was a whole kind of intimate moment with this professor where suddenly I'm like coming out to him but yet like feel like I'm talking to a wall or like staring at my phone the whole time so I was trying to draw like the hands and the exchange of like what's being shared of like a book that might be intimate in sh making a connection. Um, so I don't know, I think there's probably a couple panels in between, but that's what I started. Yeah, keep going so with Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Hi, um, I'm Carmen. Um, I use she, hers. Um, I'm coming from San Francisco, California. Um, and I started drawing my last semester of college. Um, I saw an Oberlin shirt, so shout out to Oberlin. Um, I graduated in 2014. Um, my last semester, I took a cartoon, a graphic narrative class, and I was a longtime drawer, but long time not confidence haver. So, and we, it was all like Linda Barris, Berry style learning. So, a lot of Linda Berry love. Um, my page is, um, my memory is really sad. <laughs> um, it's about, um, my, me, a uh, thing with me and my mom. And ultimately, basically we loved this artist named Jens Lechman. And we spent a lot of time in the car together, listening to music and sharing music and, um, having a lot of overlap in case of music. We were in the car all the time. Cause I grew up in LA and when Jens Lechman came to town and I was like 15, we went to the concert and. I totally ditched her um, at the concert and wanted to be with my friend and seem all cool. Um, and the whole concert, I felt so awful. But I was trying to like enjoy and act like I'm enjoying this. This is great. But I knew that I like deeply, deeply hurt my mom. Um, and I made her cry in the car afterwards and it's just like it's like the first memory that when you ask Lawrence like to bring up memories it was like calling to me really heavily and I had I felt like I had the resources to answer its call today and I really love this workshop and appreciate everyone here so much and uh, thank you thank you uh, I think we have time for three people including the person that's on the screen now. Hello. Um, but if you don't get to share, um, we encourage you to share on social media and tag the believer. I don't have social media, so you can't tag me, but you don't need to tag me. So, hello. Hey there. Uh, my name's Stephen Friedman. I live just north of San Francisco and San Rafael. Uh, my preferred pronouns are he and him. I do not have any drawing experience. This is the third Believer cartooning class I've taken because I'm interested in it. And I would love to pursue it more. I am a middle school social studies teacher and I've always wished I could draw more and I'll, I'll just keep practicing. Uh, the particular memory that I came up with was uh, not quite 10 years ago. Uh, my uh, first wife died. Uh, so I, I drew a scene of her, well, of me, you know, she's gone and then um i didn't do it chronologically just because i started drawing it but after that the next morning i had to explain to my daughter who was then four 
uh, that her mom had died. And so she actually didn't believe me and went downstairs to see that everything had, was already gone, the hospital bed and obviously my, my uh, first wife's body and all that. So she came back to the room and said, don't worry, daddy, I'll um, take care of you. And so I tried to draw that. And then later in the day, uh, my son had, did not want to be at home for most of the week, knowing that my he was 12 and knowing that my wife was going to die. So he had been staying with a friend. So I went to pick him up at school just to let him know what had happened. And then he, you know, uh, was he, I bought him a chocolate bar uh, and then an ice cream bar. Uh, and, and then he, you know, I, I told him what had happened and then he, you know, asked me if I was there, you know, how did it go kind of thing. And so, um, you know, that is it for me. But thank you so much for this class. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello. Please introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name is Oliver. And um, uh, this is a, a picture of um, my first soccer goal. When I, um, when I was like three or four, I scored my first soccer goal, which is uh, to this day my favorite sport. So uh, I'm just jumping and I'm just, uh, really happy and I'm screaming and shouting. Awesome, thank you, Oliver. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. Hi, hey. I am, my name is Becky. I'm in Berkeley, California, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I drew a little comic about um, swimming in China Beach um, in San Francisco. It's actually, I wound up doing two panels. So the first panel is actually just a picture of the sign. Um, it's like a stone tablet at the outside of China Beach. And this was a day that I went swimming with a friend of mine who was um, very pregnant. And we there were big waves that day and we got caught in a riptide and it was really scary. Um, so that's, that's actually me. My friend, my pregnant friend was super calm and she told me how to get out of the riptide. So we swam back out and then came in a different way. Um, but it was a it was it was a scary day, but it was very exciting, and everybody everybody came out alive. So, um, thanks for this workshop. It's really great. I love seeing other people's comments. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I think is it possible we could do one more? I think we have time for one more. Hold on, I think you're muted. Hi, I'm Robin. I am in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My pronouns are she, her, and uh, I am the professor. And I'm teaching. I'm teaching kind of a literary critical graphics on uh, graphic novel and comics class right now, and some of my students are here. So I want to model for them not being ashamed of what you do because I'm not really a drawer. But my memory, I also told them about this on last Saturday. I had a crazy COVID rage fight with someone in the park uh, over their unleashed dog and unmaskedness. And I did not, I was like the Ted Yoho of masking to this. I was just the worst, just the worst. And I just felt so, so, so ashamed. But when I told all my friends about it, um, they all laughed and said, oh, good for you. Oh, the hell with her. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't get it. This was not good behavior. So uh, so on Wednesday, that was my first memory. The second memory is on Wednesday, I saw her again and I had to apologize, but I didn't intend to. And there we are like coming upon each other in the same park and I'm like, oh no, it's her. And I couldn't believe it. And I said, uh, and, and so I pull my mask up or I consider it, why oh why? Why, oh, why, I say, did I not wear sunglasses? Why didn't I wear sunglasses? Because she's going to recognize me. I can't find my uh, comic here. Why didn't I wear sunglasses? And then I find my arm waving at her. I didn't realize that was going to happen. I don't know if you can 
didn't see that. So my arm goes up and I'm waving and she sees me and she's like, she's like, oh, hi. Like her arm starts to go up to wave. She has no idea who I am. And that's what I say. She has no idea who I am. But anyway, so I ended up apologizing to her kind of, you know, involuntarily. It just came out of me, thank God. And it set me free you know and it healed that really really ugly altercation between us and i didn't get to finish the comic but i was really grateful to have finished that story so hi to my students and thank you so much to you lawrence and to the believer and that's thank it you. thank you um so yeah like i said thank you for sharing your work um if you didn't get to share today and you feel comfortable posting it online, post it online, tag the believer and say you did it in the memory comics workshop. I don't have social media. It was becoming too stressful given everything that's happening. It's just, I'd rather take control of my mental health in that way. So, um, but thank you for sharing. It's not easy making comics. It's not easy making art and then sharing that with people and then having that voice in your head saying like, hey, what if this is not as good as I think it is? But I hope that didn't happen today because I hope everyone can leave feeling like they have the right to make comics. And that's the whole purpose of everything I do. It's like, I'm not a comic artist because I'm special. It's because I like to make comics. Um, if you like to make comics, you're a comic artist. Go make a comic. No one has the authority to tell you you can't make comics. Um, and I'll end on that. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm still nervous. I'm rambling because I'm still nervous, but it was really fun and I appreciate you all being here. And I hope during this time that you're able to take care of yourselves and that you feel loved and yeah, thank you.